<clears throat> Hello again. Uh, in this video, I'm going to try and explain a few things that we need to be familiar with in order to understand uh, 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 the uh, concept behind the RDF and behind the uh, semantic web in general. Now, uh, I'm sure you've seen these before: URLs, URIs, IRIs, and namespaces. I'll try to exp so now I'll try to uh, just define them and just remind you of what these things are. Starting with a URL, of course, it stands for Uniform Resource Locator. And this is a typical URL where we have uh, the server name and maybe a, a directory number and then a file name that we want to reach. So if we put this into our web browser, then what we're doing is we're accessing the server which is located here. This is just, just this is just a textual representation. Otherwise, we have the IP address, IP address of course, and this is a directory on the server, and this is a this is a directory on the server, and this is a file and that's what we're trying to reach. Now we have uniform resource locators and also we have universal resource names. These were uh, used for example to for example um, um, ident identify books or so for example to identify a certain book. We can use an urn or URN, ISBN and we give the book number although these are not very commonly used so I doubt that you're going to see them somewhere but I just thought I, I'd let you know about them. Now, what we have is, we have what is called a URI, a Universal Resource Identifier, which actually encompasses these two. So, the uh, sort of the root of the tree is a URI, and we have a URL as a branch, and a URN as another branch, although, because URNs are rarely used, then many people actually use URLs and URIs interchangeably, although they are actually different. So, a URL is sort of... A, every URL is a URI, but not every URI is a URL. So a URL is a subset or sort of a branch of a URI. I hope that makes sense. Every URL is a URI, but not every URI is a URL. Now, as we said, uh, URI is uh, it, it stands for Universal Resource Identifier. It, it, it encompasses both URL, URLs and URNs. So most URIs are URLs. That's what we meant by saying every URL is a URI. Most of them are URLs, but they're not all URLs. Uh, and maybe that's why, because most of them, most of URIs are URLs, that's why maybe some people uh, use, use the two terms uh, interchangeably, although they are different. So for example, this is a URI um, uh, for the fourth friend of a friend vocabulary. We'll come to that later, where it actually try to try to describe or defines or have some data about the concept of a person but because it starts with a HTTP colon double slash that doesn't necessarily mean that there's actually a website or a web page over there I mean if I copy and paste this into my web browser as you will see this will just redirect me to here for just for the specification so there isn't actually a real web page here just because it starts with the HTTP da 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 it doesn't mean there's a web page but that's only a URI uh, that's only a URI to tell us where we can find some uh, terminology or some uh, vocabulary about the concept of a person and by the way I've forgotten to mention that I'm still I'm still using this beautiful book remember it's a nice book if you want to learn about Sparkle in general but chapter 2 has uh, 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 um, a nice introduction about the semantic web and URIs, URLs, URLs and everything that we need to know to get familiar and to get to grips with the concept of the semantic web. Uh, where were we? We were here, yes. Now, um, one thing I wanted to mention is that the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force, they also released IRIs, internationalized resource identifiers now, and the reason for using these, these are more sort of more encompassing, you'll see them maybe when you learn Sparkle, but these are URIs, or maybe even URLs, but they just can have extra characters, so for example they can have Chinese characters or some other special characters, so they're, they're almost exactly the same. Uh, it, th these ones just can have more characters, sort of, as I said, you know, Chinese characters or any other characters. But you maybe see them uh, uh, in Sparkle, but usually they are used interchangeably and they're almost exactly the same. The only thing that I wanted you to really know that 
every URL is a URI, but not every URI is a URL. We move on to the next slide quickly. Now, let me ask you this question. Imagine when we use XML, uh, what if we use two sets of elements, yes, for diff two different domains, yeah? So what if two sets of elements from or for two different domains use the same name for two different things? Let me give you an example. The word title. If in my XML document I want I want to use property title, uh, but as you know, a person can have a title. You know, I have a title. You can have a title, um, and a book has a title. Yes. So how do we know the the meaning of the word title in our context how do we know for example in my XML document how do I know that when I, I want when I have a book I want to use the word title and when I have a person I want to use the, the word title and these two words are not exactly the same how do I do that well the solution is there for a long time computer science has used the term namespace to refer to a set of names used for a particular purpose what that means is I can have a namespace in that namespace I can have a set of names uh, for a particular purpose for example for a person if I want to describe a person then I can have a namespace and I can have a, a list of words that, that describe a person for example gender title surname and things like that and then for a book I can have another namespace to describe a book and have a list of names that uh, can be used to refer to um, uh, uh, to a book and you know from that for example I can have, I can have like an ISBN I can have uh, a title uh, I can have for example author names I can have the title of the book again the word title here is used again but this time for a text for uh, in the context of a book now how do we actually have a namespace how do we use a namespace how do we actually name it and use it well of course with a URI as we learned here so with a URI we can learn we can have a namespace and in that namespace we can define our set of names or our vocabulary and then we can use it for our purposes I hope this is not taking too long I'm thinking of stopping here and recording another video uh, and you know what let's continue and see what happens otherwise we can stop here and then uh, if it's taking too long then we can uh, do another video let's, let's continue yes now so let's take an example for example the name of for the Dublin uh, the Dublin core standard uh, a standard set of basic metadata terms is this URI here so we have the Dublin core it ha it's a set of standard I'm sorry it's a, it's a standard set of basic metadata terms so when, whenever we have some metadata ie data about data then we can use Dublin core standard which is available at this URI here remember this is not a URL this is a URI so for example if we go back to our uh, idea here of using namespaces well in in our XML document what we can use is we can use the idea of having prefixes now so we can have say for example XML namespace colon DC so this is uh, just a prefix or short name to refer to the URI so we can say XML NS uh, that's a namespace for our XML document colon that's the name that we're going to use inside the XML document whenever we use we refer this and it refers to this URI over here so again to indicate that for example the DC prefix will stand for the Dublin core namespace URI in this document so DC stands for this URI of the Dublin core inside our document what we can say is we can go inside our, uh, inside our documents and say DC title for example weaving the web and then close uh, DC title well if we have an XML processor and it finds this it will automatically understand automatically know that title used here refers to or is coming from Dublin core ie it will have the Dublin core sense of the meaning of the word i.e. it's a title of a work or a title of a book you know title of a work in general title of something done by someone or by a particular individual rather than a title of a person so in the, in the Dublin core when you use that it automatically knows you know any XML processor should automatically know that this title here coming from 
the DC the, from the Dublin core using the prefix now it will automatically know that it's coming from here i.e. it will have the sense of the title of a work rather than a title of a person we took an example here uh, 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 where was that we took an example here yes exactly for example to uh, 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 describe the concept of a person so if we use this uh, namespace for example in our XML document let's say we give it for example uh, P as a short uh, as a prefix or something and if we use it then inside our XML document then our XML processor should automatically know that we are speaking now about the title of a person because it's coming from the namespace that describes a person hope that makes sense continuing along the same line now uh, in RDF in resource description format yes we can also have prefixes I will come to what exactly RDF is and what it looks like in my coming video but now I just wanted you to know that in RDF in general we can use prefixes very easily just like we use them in XML so for example if we want to uh, use this URI the, the, this namespace here then we can use it uh, let's say we, for example we give it the V prefix so V colon and we give it this URI here meaning that whenever we use the V in our document it will be referring to this URI over here so in inside our, our an RDF data set we can say for example a person like uh, the respected Tim Berners-Lee has a title so V title of director yes or we can actually use the long name as a whole so the full name rather than using the prefix uh, so we can use actually the full name rather than a prefix rather than saying V colon title we can use the full URI inside its angle brackets as you can see I just wanted you to, uh, to know about this but we'll come to this in my upcoming videos thank you very much indeed for watching and I'll see you next time I hope everything is making sense now if not please just continue watching and hopefully with time things will become clearer and you will get to grips and get your head round and you will get your head round everything about the semantic web and about this idea of uh, uh, RDF triples as we will explain you arise you arise and the rest of it bye bye now